Okay, this video I wanted to make was going to be about migraines. Okay, so it's not just about migraines in general. This video is going to be for the people that have been to their doctor, they've been to specialists, and they can't find an answer. The doctors can't really help them. Maybe they give them pain medication. Um, they tell them to do, you know, certain stretches for their neck, but they cannot get better. Uh, and doctors don't really have an answer for them. Maybe they've 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 done certain scans, different tests, and um, they have no answer still, and they still get my, suffer from migraines. So what is a migraine? A migraine is when you get headaches that are pretty much debilitating. They can last for this, they can last for hours to days, sometimes like upwards of three days or more. Um, uh, you know, the symptoms can include like nausea, um, light sensitivity, where you can't even stand any kind of light, um, motion sickness. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I mean, there's, there's a lot of symptoms involved. Um, dizziness, um, confusion, moodiness, but basically it's a debilitating headache. Okay, I'm gonna try to make this a lot quicker um, than I usually would talk about something like this, but um, I'm gonna just try to point you in the right direction. And the things that I talk about, I want you to try to do the research on your own, um, especially if, if you're somebody that is kind of desperate and searching for some answers and doctors and specialists have not really been able to help you at all. Um, th these are things that you may not have looked into yet. So hopefully this gives you some, some hope and um, a possible solution. Again, th but this is not medical advice at all. This is just um, educational and it's stuff that I've learned uh, through research on my own and some experience. Okay, let's start with one of the causes I believe that a lot of people, ton of people go undiagnosed with. And one of those things is dental infections and cavitations, which is basically um, a cavity in your jawbone. This is basically an infection in your jawbone. So these things totally go undiagnosed so many times because they get missed on x-rays. You can't really, you can't really see them on x-rays. Um, you typically will need a 3D cone beam CT scan to view these things. And even then they can still get missed sometimes. But um, you know, that's something that's literally right in your head. It can be even, even in the upper jaw, it could be lower jaw, but I mean, it's so close to your head yet it goes unnoticed or unchecked. You know, doctors don't even think about that that thing because dentistry and regular medicine is so separated. Um, so that's something to look into, and not just not just um, dental infections, cavitations, but also if you have any root canals in your mouth, because root canals are actually dead, chronic infect you know dead teeth that are chronic infections in your mouth. Um, also, if you've had your wisdom teeth removed in the past those um, areas, those pockets where they were removed, if they were not done properly, um, can harbor bacteria and that can become a cavitation and raging infection. And you don't have to have pain at all. There doesn't have to be any pain at all, uh, local pain um, or any swelling or anything for you to have a raging infection in there. So that's something to look into. I'm not gonna get into all the details of that. We can go into, you know, I could easily go into books like this um, root canal cover-up, Georgie meaning, um, we can go into things like the toxic tooth, you know, things like that. These books have a lot of information. Um, another book, It's All in Your Head, Hal Huggins. Um, look into those things. Okay, another area could be um, occipital neuralgia. I think occipital neuralgia um, can go undiagnosed sometimes and then also be confused for just general headaches or migraines. Um, what is occipital neuralgia? You have occipital muscles right in the back of your head in this area back here, uh, four muscles. And um, the, the occipital neuralgia is where you have uh, a nerve in your C2 or cervical spine um, basically being pinched and causing pain that radiates um, through the head, but can cause basically headaches and a lot of issues. It comes from cervical instability. So you can look into that more if you haven't really heard of that or, or been diagnosed as that. Maybe that's not what you have, but look into it, do some research. Um, one of the easiest things you can do 
for that is go see a prolotherapist that that takes care of um, occipital neuralgia or is is uh, familiar with uh, cervical instability and um, prolotherapy I believe can help help you heal from uh, occipital neuralgia so what is prolotherapy Pro prolotherapy is basically a um, regenerative injection technique or therapy that uh, purposefully causes an irritation in your ligament to stimulate healing. Um, I can go into explain further in that, but I'm not just look into it. Next thing that I feel like could be a big issue is uh, vitamin deficiencies. And um, that can, I mean, if you haven't looked into this yet, take this in consideration. Um, some of the vitamins that you may want to start taking and researching, I would recommend would be one of them magnesium. Don't do not take oxide as my recommendation. Don't take oxide, but if you have a sensitive stomach, take, um, malate, uh, or maybe even, um, citrate or glycinate, but malate's pretty good. Uh, look into vitamin D, remember D3 or get the sun. Those are the, your best options. Um, you can even get it from natural vitamin D from uh, fermented cod liver oil. Uh, next one is CoQ10, look into that, and uh, riboflavin. Those are the ones that you want to really look into. Um, and then also your B vitamins as well. Um, one of the things that can cause that is poor nutrition, um, absorption issues, like gut health issues. Maybe your gut health is not doing so well and you're not even aware of that. Um, and then another issue that I wanted to mention heavy metal toxicity and poisoning like mercury, um, specifically mercury, arsenic, and copper. Those are the ones that cause headaches. And um, I have this book right here, Amalgam Illness. It's from Andrew Cutler, super smart guy. Um, it's all about diagnosis and treatment of, of you know, he, he says amalgam because amalgam is the silver amalgam fillings, which is 50% mercury. Um, and so many people have them in their mouth and it causes mercury poisoning. But this book is all about what you can do to get better and um, also how your doctor can help. But it talks about like what those things do to you. And there's one little section here that I wanted to mention. And um, it, he does mention migraines. Um, and he talks about that ginger may relieve help uh, or may help relieve migraines. And... Um, if you're taking arginine, you may want to lower the dose or stop taking it because that can aggravate headaches. Um, but the reason why is because uh, as far as like mercury and heavy metals causing this is uh, many of the problems mercury causes in the brain are simply because it makes it harder for the brain to get oxygen and glucose to turn into energy. This in turn makes it harder for your brain to make the neurotransmitters it needs to function properly. So, um, I mean, that's basically why I'm not going to go into all the details of that. I could talk literally for hours on this one topic. So, um, so yeah, those are the main things. Anyways, I'd recommend looking into those things and let me see if I had anything else. Um, yeah, no, I think that's about it. So remember prolotherapy, look into that, look into, um, dental infections, cavitations and, uh, and root canals, which is also a chronic infection. Try to go to the right person if you're going to get that taken care of. Somebody that is uh, part of that, um, you know, they're a member of the IAOMT, International Academy of Oral Medicine Toxicology. Um, they're smart certified. They know about all the holistic practices of, you know, of um, matching your biocompatibility blood test to the dental materials that you need to use for your body so you don't um, cause an autoimmune reaction to the materials um, that they use on you. And that also knows about proper removal of cavitations and infections, knows how to clean out the ligament or remove the ligament and um, clean out the jawbone properly. Um, so look into that. And then uh, the prolotherapy, like I said, look for a prolotherapist that is familiar with cervical instability. Oh, also, I didn't want to forget that. For the prolotherapy, um, you may want to look into somebody that, that actually does that knows how to diagnose uh, loose or damaged ligaments in the neck. So they would use something like a digital, digital motion x-ray. Um, and that will actually, it's not just a regular x-ray, it's, it's using motion as you move your head and your neck, 
you'll be able to see the instability. So remember, digital motion x-ray, um, and then also they can use ultrasound to help diagnose ligaments because regular x-rays, MRIs, things like that, um, it can look normal or appear normal, but it's not showing the instability as you move, you know, as your joint moves through the motion. It's not showing each vertebrae how they move. If one is stable and the other one is, is moving unstable, which is causing the, the cervical to pinch. Um, so look into that. And then for the migraines to get some relief um, in the meanwhile, one thing I know that really can help you not have to suffer the day that you start getting your migraine, and let's say you're used to it lasting two days or three days, is uh, coffee enemas. So look into that. That may sound gross to you. Look into it. It's not gross. It, it, um, it actually is not scary at all. It doesn't really feel like much. Um, very easy to do, very easy to learn. And uh, that works wonders. I'm telling you, it works miracles. Um, nurses back in World War I, I believe it was, do this research, you'll see. Um, when they would run out of uh, morphine, they would actually give the soldiers that were in severe pain, they would actually give them enemas. I think with water, I don't know about they would use coffee, but I'm pretty sure they would do water enemas when they ran out of pain medication. So look into that. That can be a lifesaver as far as not having to suffer maybe the whole day or, or can help you feel a little bit better. Um, I have personal experience with that. I don't, I'm lucky enough I don't get, I don't suffer from migraines. Um, anyways, video ended up being a little longer than I wanted it to be, but I gotta go, I gotta run, um, take care. Hope this information finds you well, and I'll talk to you next time and hopefully make another video about this, covering it more in depth on each topic. This is just kind of trying to point you in the right direction so you can do your own research, okay? So take care, uh, love, and peace. Okay, one more thing I almost missed is um, certain foods and certain chemicals can actually cause, um, can spark up a migraine. So pay attention to, you know, every time you get a, your migraine, what did you eat that same day earlier or maybe even the day before, maybe even two days before, but pay attention to what you ate exactly. Um, and then see if there's a pattern, like the next time you got a migraine and then the next time you got a migraine and then start really paying attention to what you ate. If there's something, an offending food, um, you know, if you eat at home a lot, then that's not going to be a huge issue because you can kind of narrow it down a little better. But if you're eating out, eating fast food, eating this junk food, eating that, there's so many ingredients in these things that you don't know if there's MSG that caused it. You don't know if there's a particular nitrate or chemical or something in there that caused it, but try to pay attention to what you ate before you got the migraine and try to eliminate those things, try to stay away from those things. But certain foods can also trigger migraines. Um, so keep that in mind and let's see what else. Maybe you can make a food journal, or you can start narrowing down your foods and then start adding certain things back in one by one um, to make it really simple. And then once you add that certain thing in that sparks the migraine, then you can take it out again, test it out one more time to make sure it was that food or not. Um, yeah, that's it. Try not to eat crappy foods because a lot of sugar, a lot of chemicals, a lot of junk, certain um, things like MSG can, can spark up uh, headaches, okay? So I think that's it. Cool.